is what happens with these ones. They cancel off. And so essentially then I can eliminate my brackets here. Instead of rewriting, I just eliminate my brackets. And what do I have? I have x's on the top and the bottom. And so these as well can cancel off. And so what we get is we get the limit as x approaches 0. All on the top now is just 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus 1. And now in this case, we can now plug in the 0 because we won't have any more issues. And if you do it, you will get 1 over 2. And so looking at this, you can't plug in 0 right here. Okay? Plugging in 0 will cause this function to be divisible by 0, which doesn't work. So it will be uh, undetermined, undefined. And so by rationalizing it, we can work it all the way through, and we can find out that as we are approaching 0 on both the left and the right side, we're going to approach the value of 1 half. Okay? So that's a group. These are so this is where the limits very very helpful um, when you can't work it out. How do you get to the answer there? So another question that I would like to do before we move on is a similar type question, slightly more complicated though in uh, how we need to work it through. So again, it's going to be limit uh, as x approaches zero. And we're going to do x minus 8 to the power of 1 cube. So it's a cubic root. Minus 2 over x. And again, we can see in here, if you plug in 0 to the bottom, it will not work. I'm sorry, it's actually plus 8 that I want to do. Okay, so how are, again, are we going to work this through? And again, we can see plug in 0 here. This x goes away, the cubic root of 8 is 2, 2 minus 2, so this again equals 0 over 0, which we can't use. So how do we calculate the limit of this as x approaches 0? And so let's look at this. Um, what we're going to want to do is instead of working, we could rationalize it, but it's going to, it might be harder to work with, so let's just use some substitution. Let's let u equal x plus 8 to the power of 1 third. And by doing that, we now have u on the top, u minus 2 on the top. But we still have this x here, we don't want x's and u's. So, let's continue this, this notion here. If u is equal to eight, x plus 8 to the power of 1 third, u cubed is equal to x plus 8. And then, all we, then what we can do is simply bring the 8 to the other side and you get that u cubed minus 8 equals x. So this is fantastic. Now we have the x plus 8 to the power of 1 third is u. So we can replace that with u. And we know now that x is u cubed minus 8 and that can go in for the x. Okay. So let's replace all that. So the limit as x approaches is 0 of u minus 2 all over u cubed minus 8. Yeah. And now, how do we go about working this? Well, now this is a, a difference of cubes. And we can factor down a difference of, cube, of, difference of cubes. So this is u minus 2 all over u minus 2. You just take the cubes of each, and then you get u squared plus 2u plus 4, if my memory serves me well. And you can see here that on the top, let's put this in brackets so it looks like a factor. These u minus 2s cancel off, and we're left with just a 1 on the top. And so now we can plug in the 0 inside here, where now we're just calculating the limit of 1 over u squared plus 2u plus 4. So let's do that. So now we can take this 0, plug it in for all the u's, you would get 
um, 1 over 0 plus 0 plus 4, 1 quarter. Okay. So the original function, then what is the limit of the original function as you're approaching 0 from both the left and the right side? You're getting closer and closer to the value of 1 quarter. All right. So those are just some basics of limits. And so the question that you know comes to my mind is this is all great, this is wonderful, and this is very algebraic. Um, we can prove these things. These, this is rigorous, what we're doing here. How does this fit into calculus? How does this bridge the gap to solving the issues that were um, surrounding calculus at the time? And so what we're going to do now is we're going to, well, let's talk about what is calculus. And there's a few different things behind calculus, including proper spelling. And one of the ideas that Newton was after was instantaneous velocity. And velocity is a curve. And so to find instantaneous velocity would be to find the tangent of a curve. And so one of the ideas of what, what is calculus is it's finding the instantaneous velocity. It's finding, it's, it's to find tangents. And so we can look at a curve on a graph. So let's draw a graph. There's any, any random graph here. And we're going to draw a curve. Let's pick off some spots on this curve. Let's pick this spot right here. This would be x, and right here would be our f of x. Well, let's pick another spot. Let's take the value of h and add it to x. And this right here would also then be f of x plus h. Well, what we can do is we can draw in, that's a bad line, we can draw in what's called the secant line. And the secant line is um, just, it's the connection. And what we could do then with that is we could calculate what the slope is at this area. And we could keep calculating slopes because what we could do is we could slowly, slowly change the values of h. We're going to let h we're going to try to find what's the limit of this. If we can figure out what h is, if we can, so we've, as, as we slowly eliminate h, as h gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and so we can find what's the value here, what's the value here, 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 until you have become a tangent line. So this would be the tangent. Okay. And so as h approaches zero as h um, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller we're going to get closer and closer to our our x value and we're going to get closer and closer to the tangent so let's figure out then what is the slope of my c my original secant line and we'll go from there so we remember we have the two coordinates of x comma f of x and x plus h, comma, f of x plus h. Let's calculate the slope. So m is equal to, remember it's uh, delta y over delta x, and which is a rate of change. That's interesting. And so we could do f of x plus h minus f of x all over x plus h minus x. And what this does is it, it, it eliminates those x's. So we can rewrite our slope of our secant line is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so as I was saying on the previous screen is as we get, as, as h approaches zero, we're going to get closer and closer and closer and closer to this tangent line. And so then what is the value there? What is the value of the limit at that spot? And so that's exactly what we want to do then, is let's rewrite this into a limit. As h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. 
And so we have turned, we've used a limit here to help us figure out what the tangent is. Okay? And remember, the tangent along a curve is it's what the derivative is. And so we, by doing this, by picking x and picking a value h, you can make your secant line, you get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as you, as, as h approaches zero, not x, as h approaches zero, and then you will approach your tangent. So what, how does this now, now work? So this, in effect, is our derivative. This is our calculus. So this equals the derivative. Which in a sense, limits, then helped us to figure out what calculus is. And so, like I said, calc uh, the, the limits, as you've seen all the examples I've done, they're quite rigorous. They are, they're, they are, they are based on um, facts and theorems and, and algebra that we can prove. And we've then taken that and used it to show what the derivative is. Well, let's do a couple examples using the limits to calculate the derivatives. And so let's look at the function f of x equals x squared. Very common function, and many people know that the derivative of this is, if, uh, is just 2x. So let's see, can we get the value of 2x using the limit? So the limit, as h approaches 0, would then be um, x plus h squared minus x squared all over h. Well, let's work it through. So the first thing is we need to expand the top. The limit uh, as h approaches 0, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared all over h. And then, lo and behold, x squared minus x squared is eliminated. And at the same time, you can see here that all of my remaining values here, they all have an h. And so we can eliminate those h's. This, just one of these h's goes away. And we're left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h. And so now what we can do is go back to our very first example where you just take the, the limiting value, you plug it in uh, to the h, and this would then just equal 2x, which is in fact the derivative of x squared. So we've used limits now to do the derivative of a relatively common um, known derivative. And so that's where we're going to end for today. And so I hope you've enjoyed seeing uh, the history of, calc of calculus. Uh, it's a, it's a, to me, it's a fascinating story of just kind of the controversy behind it and how it took 200, about 200 years, 150 to 200 years, to come up with um, the rigor behind calculus, to come up with this. And I found it really fascinating to just I kind of reintroduce myself to limits. I learned them a while ago, and to see again what is a limit, how does it work, and then finally, how does it become calculus? How does a limit give us calculus? And so, hopefully, you've seen here how that has happened. Thank you.